Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and this is the $100 sewing machine that I talked about on my channel about a year ago, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can add a motor to it for under $50 with all stuff you can buy online and no special tools. Check it out. All right, so in May of 2019, I put out a video on my channel talking about this awesome little sewing machine that I found on Amazon. Uh, it's $115 and it's a manual uh, hand crank sewing machine for stitching leather and heavy fabric. Um, the video went totally crazy and had you know 700,000 views um, and a lot of people bought these machines. And in the comments, a lot of them said, you know, it'd be so easy to slap a motor on this. Well. I've spent the last couple months thinking about that and a couple people have put motors on them but most of them take this drive wheel and they send it out to someone with a lid and they have them put a groove in it then they put a, a, a pulley on that and a belt and you know they, they utilize the machine basically as it is but with modification. Now that's great if you have access to a machine shop but I didn't want to figure out a way to motorize this that required all that special tooling or paying somebody money sending out this wheel. It just seemed like a lot of work. So I kind of thought about it. I bought a bunch of different parts online and eventually I came up with what I think is a really elegant solution. So let's get into it. For those of you who aren't familiar with this machine, this is a hand crank machine. So this is a piece of veg tan leather and I'm just going to show you the way it stitches right now. So I, I uh, turn this wheel on the side, the machine cranks through, and it feeds using the foot and can stitch leather very easily. Um, it really does a great job on leather, multiple pieces, single pieces. It, it just has no problem stitching leather, and it's a great little machine um, for, you know, making knife sheaths uh, or, you know, anything with leather belts stuff like that so the problem is you know the more you use this thing you more the more you wish it would just run on its own so here's what i've come up with now this pulley is from a husqvarna snowblower i believe or a lawnmower I'm, i'll put a link to all the parts from this in the description of this video and what's important about this pulley is that it has a v a groove in it that doesn't bottom out for a traditional like v belt so with this, you can use uh, polyurethane belting that you can make your own length. So this stuff we're going to heat up with a lighter and we're going to basically glue it to itself to make a custom length belt. And what's specific about this type of pulley is that this type of pulley can be mounted right to the face of this wheel without modifying this wheel at all. And the, the most beautiful part of this whole thing um, is this little piece right here, which might look familiar to you. This is from a light fixture. Now this would normally go in like a ceiling canopy of a, of a piece of decorative lighting. And what this allows us to do is offset from using this factory bolt that bolts this wheel on and bolt right into those two holes that are factory come on this piece. So you don't even need a drill to drill through metal to put this together. So let's get into putting this thing together. Uh, we're gonna add a couple pieces of wood and we're just gonna use a wrench to take this apart and put it back together. So we're gonna have to take this little ground screw out of here. We won't need that. The way the hole in this works is it sort of self-centers on this, on the round side of this nut. So we're just gonna put that on there. And then as we tighten it down, we're gonna make sure that it, it centers itself out nicely. Now, you could get a shim or a washer to put in there to really make it perfect. Um, you know, if you ground one down, it would be nice. I'm gonna make that pretty tight. Now the action of this is gonna actually be tightening this nut as we go so we don't have to worry so much about it getting loose. Now the machine can run in reverse, but the motor is only gonna run in one direction. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So now that we have this bolted on there, we're gonna put this, this pulley uh, directly onto this. Now there are two threaded points on this and these are threaded for 832 threads and they are just perfect, just about perfect to fit on there. And what I noticed with mine was I had to kind of bend mine a little bit now there is this offset there and it does get us exactly how far away we need from this nut. But if you bend these leaves a little bit, you can kind of stretch them out. They're a little close, so you might need to stretch this a little bit and almost flatten it out just so that you can definitely get there. 
Now what I found was you'll need a short bolt about five eighths of an inch long. And then what I did was I took a two inch long bolt and I just put a whole bunch of washers on it. And this is gonna actually replace the handle that we originally had, which is another nice feature of this modification is that you're not gonna lose the manual capabilities of the machine. I'm not gonna make this super tight until I get the second one in there. Now you don't need to leave this one long if you don't want to, but I feel like it makes a nice handle. Um, you could get a piece of tubing and put it over this. I just have these bolts down there to act as a stop. Now if you were to leave these screws too long, they're just gonna bottom out against this plate. And that's why I'm using just a 5 8 length uh, bolt there. And then this one has these two nuts to stop it. So now you can see the machine essentially functions as it did. I'm gonna pull the thread out so I don't uh, make a knot, but the machine essentially functions exactly the same as it did, but now we've added a pulley to the face of this, and this is what's gonna make this whole thing possible. So this is the variable speed motor that we're gonna be using, and this is about 22 bucks on Amazon. Um, and this thing is, you know, it's nothing crazy. Uh, it's fast, it's a 65 or 6,000 RPM motor, um, and it uses this little tiny pulley on it right here. And we're gonna utilize that because we're gonna be going from this little tiny pulley to this relatively large pulley, and that's what's gonna give us a great speed reduction um, that we're gonna need because 6,000 RPMs, this thing would blow itself apart. Um, it comes with this little foot pedal, and you don't need to do any special wiring to get this thing to work. You just plug this in, uh, push the foot pedal, and you're good to go. Now, this obviously needs to be mounted to something. So my machine is already mounted to a piece of wood, and I'm gonna go ahead and mount it to another piece of wood so I have some room for this motor to sit off to the side. This piece right here and the piece that my machine is on are both 11 and a quarter inches deep. So that'll sit on there nicely. And then this piece on the bottom is 24 inches wide. And I'm just gonna use some inch and a quarter screws to screw this together. Now on this side of the machine, I need a place to put this motor. So what I figure is I'll do a little kind of bracket like this, uh, maybe something like that, and then the motor can mount into there, and I can just use screws again. The big thing here is I just want to have some sort of alignment between the center of this pulley and the center of that pulley. So if we kind of look at it, you know, I basically want to be somewhere around there, um, and I'm just going to screw these pieces down. This is just three-quarter inch plywood, and I should have a nice sturdy spot to mount this motor. All right, so now that I'm mounted and I'm generally in alignment, um, it's time to make the belt. Now this was an important part of this was understanding that everyone's setup would be different. So I got this polyurethane belting. This is four millimeters and I bought uh, 10 meters of it, which is way more than you need. You could buy just a couple feet because we're gonna make a pretty short belt. And what's nice about this stuff is that, you know, if you do buy this much, I think this was uh, 13 bucks for 10 meters, which is a huge amount. Uh, we can just mount the motor and you know, essentially guess on the length of the belt. And then what we'll do is we'll put in basically one pivot point for the short screw, and then we can pivot it back and tighten it up as we need. So now the belt can be tightened if we you know, kind of make it a random length and then it needs to be a little bit shorter, uh, which is what we want. We want to be able to put custom tension on it. So now we can take this piece of belting and put it on here. Now, while I was kind of testing this out, I noticed that the motor wants to spin in this direction. It wants to spin clockwise as though you're looking from the back of the motor forward. Now that wouldn't work for us. That would actually run the machine in reverse. Now a quick trick to reverse the drive on a motor in a situation like this is to have the belt cross itself. Now what this is going to do is it's going to reverse the motion that we're getting. Um, and that's exactly what we want in this instance. So we can run this belt to the end and we can cut it right there. 
and once we seam this back together, we should be good. I just stabbed myself in the hand with that razor blade. Good job, buddy. All right. So we'll just kind of clean this edge up because it's on a little bit of an angle, and I'll show you how we can join this belt together and make it one. So this is just a regular barbecue lighter, and what we're going to do is we're going to hold this stuff right off the edge of the table. We're going to heat up the very end, and then when we're ready, we're going to stick them together and hold them together. Now obviously I'm pretty close to the end of my wooden table, so you're going to want to be careful. But just melt those two ends, stick them together. And I like to rest it on a surface just so they're nice and registered against one another, nice and flat. We know that they're um, going to be lined up. You don't want them to be out of alignment. But you don't have to do too much to this stuff. You hold it together, and it's going to be very, very strong. Um, I already have made a couple of belts with this stuff, and it it's shocking how strong it is considering that you're just kind of making it on your bench. Now, that being said, I'm glad that I bought a long, uh, long piece of this because if I need to change this setup, I know I can just make a couple more belts and maybe if I had some spare time, I would just make a couple of belts because if this does snap, I don't wanna to have to make a whole new one. I'd like to have a couple on hand. For the cost of this, it's probably worth doing. I only used maybe, you know, 18 inches of it just now. And this stuff is already almost cool. Now what we do want to do is just take a razor blade and trim some of the excess off of this around the sides. We don't want to have this big kind of seam because it's going to have to run across that little tiny pulley. So I'm just going to take this and just sort of trim it a little bit at a time very carefully, making sure not to cut myself or stab myself again. And now the smoother we're able to make this, the better this whole thing is going to run. Exacto knife would probably be better. Or if you have like a little sander, maybe you could just like buzz this on the sander. All right, so you got my, got my belt done. You can see how it fits on here. Now, like I said, we're gonna wanna spin this over, which is gonna give us that reverse action and that's what's going to allow this thing to run in the proper direction once we give it some power. So now I can make this nice and tight. You can see how it's already trying to drive that motor. And I can put a second screw down here. And we're putting that second screw down there is going to lock the motor in place. And it's going to give me the tension that we're going to need in order to actually drive this thing. All right, I think it's time to plug this thing in and see how it does. So this little motor comes with a foot pedal and right here uh, there's a little bolt and what this does is it kind of limits the, the speed. Now the bolt that came on it was kind of short so I just replaced it with a little bit longer one. You're going to see how fast this thing goes uh, when we plug it in and give it, you know, give it a little bit of pressure. So you're going to want to limit the speed of this thing as much as you can and it is definitely a little finicky when it comes to uh, running this thing with the motor. So now. Right now I have the thread out of the needle because I don't want to uh, jam the machine by having it trying to make a stitch uh, when we're not really ready. But let's see, you know, when I start to push on this pedal, the motor is going to try and turn. And if I have to adjust this screw, which is just going to give me a little more. you can see, I could put a little more motor tension on it. I kind of like that it's a little bit loose. And I'm really just adjusting this little nut so that I don't go too far. So you can see it's a little violent of an action. Um, that being said, it's still very slow in comparison to what like a commercial fabric stitching machine would run. So let's get it threaded up and let's try and run some material through it and see how we do. My favorite part of this is that the machine still is able to run manually. Whoops. 
By the way, if you have one of these machines and you haven't made yourself a little threading tool, this is just some thin wire. And if you stick this up through this kind of shuttle here, it makes pulling the wire down so much easier. I have never been able to actually thread the wire down from the bottom without using this little tool and it took all of two minutes to make. So if you have one of these or you're gonna get one of these, get yourself a little bit of thin metal wire and look how easy it is to just pull that thread down. All right, so now the machine is threaded. Take a piece of leather and throw it in there. Throw the press foot down. Put my foot pedal on the ground. And I'm gonna, what'll be nice is I'll have two hands to control the piece of material. Now, obviously this thing is really fast, so I'm gonna try to be a little careful on the foot pedal. Let's see how we do. See, now I can hand stitch for a second, get around this corner, start my stitch again, and then I can hit the pedal and keep going. Take a look. So, like I said, it's aggressive, um, but, and also the foot on this machine is notably pretty harsh on your leather if you don't soften it up. Now mine's really sharp, I've been meaning to sort of deburr it, but, you know, I just blazed around that piece pretty quickly um, and with really good control. What I noticed is that this thing kind of wants to wander, um, so maybe I'll tighten this up a little bit, but let's try and stitch two pieces together and go around the border, make a little pouch or whatever, and see how it does. And what I'm noticing is that my, the, the tension on my belt is just enough that sometimes I need to kind of help it along with this, but I don't actually mind that because it's giving me kind of a manageable speed. So let's do another, another shot. Uh, let's see how we do. I might actually throw um, something to keep this down onto the table because it wants to like run away from me. I'm just gonna screw it down to my bench real quick. I guess in theory you could clamp this to your table um, because the action of it, the action of it jumping around is making it kind of want to walk around the table and I don't want it to move. Now if this was my normal sewing bench I could just clamp it down and that would be sufficient so. All right, so just like that, um, you know, like I said, this is under $50 worth of stuff. The motor is 22 bucks, the pulley is 11 bucks, the belting, depending on how much you buy, is between $6 and $14, and the little light bracket that's behind the pulley is four bucks. You can buy all of this on Amazon, and you really don't need more than a screwdriver to put this together. Um, 
you know, I don't know how running this motor on this machine is going to affect it. Like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty violent motion and it's a lot. So I keep my machine pretty well lubricated. I just use sewing machine oil. I put it in here. I lubricate all the joints. Um, and long term, this thing might just fall apart if you use the motor on it for too long. But, you know, for the stuff that I do, to be able to have two hands to control the, the workpiece and also not be sitting there cranking, but still have the ability to forward and back stitch with this, still having this pulley face mounted to the original flywheel, this is a success in my mind. Um, like I said, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do this and I'm really, really happy with this. So if you buy the machine for 115 bucks, spend 50 bucks on the motor and all the other little stuff and get some plywood scraps from like Home Depot or from your local lumber yard, you can have yourself a super capable machine that will easily sew two pieces of veg tan leather. I've sewn four pieces of veg tan with this machine without problem. So I think this is something that everyone should do to their little hand crank sewing machine. All right, that about does it for this little video. I'm really psyched on this. Um, I, like I said, I spent a ton of time combing through Amazon and eBay and thinking about, you know, did I want to maybe make my own pulleys and sell them um, to help people motorize this machine on the cheap. And coming up with this solution, it all just sort of worked together. Um, and, you know, it's about having the experience to think outside the box on something like this. So uh, I have a, a background in kind of home repair and when I was thinking about a way to offset uh, and attach this pulley to this, the, you know, the first thing I was gonna do was some sort of coupler nut and then all of a sudden, boom, it hit me. If I use an offset thing uh, from a light canopy, that would be perfect. And you know, I wanted this to be simple. I didn't want there to be any electronics involved. Uh, and yeah, you could go in and you could get a really nice sewing machine motor that's gonna give you a nice low speed and a lot of torque, um, and a lot of guys have. So uh, this is a sort of do-it-yourself solution, and I hope that you guys give it a try. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm gonna put links to where you can get all these components uh, in the description of this video, and I am happy to help get you off the ground with this and get it running. Now, like I said, be aware, this could totally just tear this machine apart if you use it too much. It is pretty aggressive, it's running really fast, it makes a lot of noise, and it really jumps around a lot. So proceed with caution, um, and also you could very easily hurt yourself by stitching your finger with this machine like any sewing machine, because it's running pretty fast, and uh, you know, just be careful, all right? Um, if you want to see behind the scenes stuff, what I'm doing in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me here at Make Everything Shop on Instagram. I showed the process of kind of putting this thing together and figuring it out. So uh, people ask me questions and I like to respond right away and sort of keep the conversation going on Instagram. So check me out there. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos using this thing, videos in the shop, making stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give this a try and I will see you on the next video. Thanks.